Russia and Turkey have been at odds over Syria for almost 10 years, with Ankara supporting jihadist insurgents to overthrow the Syrian government while Moscow has intervened on the side of Damascus. Russia has frequently intercepted Turkish aircraft violating Syrian airspace to protect its ally and carried out airstrikes against Turkish-backed militants. These jihadist militants currently hold territory in Idlib province near the Turkish border. In response to a Turkish attack on a Russian Su-24 strike fighter in 2015, Russia has heavily fortified its position in Syria against future air attacks. This video will assess the outcome of a potential conflict between the Turkish Air Force and Russian aerial warfare assets in Syria. Syria has a formidable aerial warfare capability of its own, with missile systems such as the S-300 PMU-2, aircraft such as the MiG-29 and 25, and advanced air-to-air -air missiles such as the R-40 and R-77 all in service. It will be assumed, however, that these assets will not participate in a conflict. First, to look at Russia's Khmeimim air base in Syria. The base is defended by the world's two most advanced multi-role long-range air defense systems, the S-400 and S-300 V-4. The S-400 was designed to combat high-end stealth aircraft and can engage them at high hypersonic speeds. Against all the non-stealthy designs, its probability of kill will be extremely high. The S-300 V-4 is newer, more mobile and more specialized in intercepting missile attacks, but cannot engage as many targets simultaneously as the S-400. Access to over half a dozen classes of specialized missiles allows both platforms to form a complex multi-layered air defense network. Deployment of complementary shorter range systems such as the Panzer, Buck M2 and possibly the S-350 further strengthens this network. Turkey notably deploys a negligible air defense network comprised of short-ranged American MIM-23 systems which date back in service 60 years. Looking at Russian air units in Syria, these have varied over the course of the war. Su-57 deployments to Syria of up to four fighters have occurred since early 2018 but have been very brief. The Russian Navy's Su-33 and MiG-29 K fighters also deployed to the country in 2016. Looking at the more permanent force deployed, however, the backbone of the Russian contingent is comprised of 16 Su-30SM flanker heavyweight fighters and 10 Su-24M strike fighters. The elite of the air contingent is comprised of 6 Su-34 strike fighters, a next-generation successor to the Su-24, and 4 Su-35 air superiority fighters. These designs both entered service in 2014 and are technologically decades ahead of anything in Turkish service. Russia also deploys the more modest medium-weight MiG-29 SMT to Syria, which has been used for strike and escort missions. Its capabilities are far more limited. Also deployed are Su-25 attack jets, an IL-20M airborne command post and the Mi-8 MTPR-1 electronic warfare helicopter. Looking at Turkish air power, the country deploys small units of aging F-4E and F-5A fighters, although these are primarily reserved for a ground attack role and will not play a major role in an air war. Turkey's only major class of fighter is the F-16C Fighting Falcon, of which it deploys approximately 260 in 8 squadrons. Designed as a low-cost and unspecialized jet and entering service in the 1970s, the F-16's performance is relatively poor compared to Russia's elite flankers with an inferior flight performance, weaker sensors and lower endurance. Russia's Su-30 benefits from thrust vectoring engines and a radar almost twice as large and more sophisticated, providing overwhelming advantages in maneuverability and situational awareness. These advantages are even greater for the Su-35, against which the much older and lighter F-16 will stand little chance. Even the MiG-29 SMT enjoys similar advantages, although to a much lesser extent. From situational awareness to speed, engagement range and climb rate, the F-16 has no advantages. The qualitative disadvantages faced by the Turkish Air Force appear even more acute if looking at types of munitions deployed. Turkish F-16s are some of the least well-armed in the world. They rely on the AIM-120B missile from the 1990s, which have much shorter ranges and inferior electronic warfare countermeasures to the more modern AIM-120C. Much of the fleet still relies on the even older AIM-7E Sparrow, an effectively obsolete missile today which lacks active radar guidance. While Turkish fighters rely on missiles designed over 25 years ago, Russian fighters deployed to Syria have been equipped with state-of-the-art missiles. 
These include the R27ER and R77, which both comfortably outrange the AIM-120B. The Su-35 sensors are powerful enough to also deploy the new R37N, which provides a max 6 speed and 400 km engagement range. Combined with Turkish jets' lower survivability, the Russian missile advantage could allow them to neutralize threats long before they get close enough to retaliate. The result will be an overwhelming Russian advantage in the air and extremely heavy Turkish losses. The low diversity of the Turkish fleet and its fast aging inventory will likely more than compensate for its quantitative advantage. This will be further compounded by the severe shortage of skilled pilots Turkey has faced since purging its air force from 2016. This already overwhelming advantage is only greater when considering Russia's massive advantage in air defenses, allowing it to neutralize Turkish jets in both Syrian and Turkish airspace, and to engage several hundred aircraft at a time in this way. Looking at standoff strike capabilities, a considerable Russian advantage is also evident. While Russian fighters are unlikely to seek to penetrate too deep into Turkish airspace due to their limited numbers, they can potentially achieve their goal of neutralizing the Turkish Air Force using standoff munitions alone. Shown here are the engagement ranges of Russian Su-24 strike fighters equipped with various classes of modern standoff missile. These allow Russian strike fighters to engage targets across Turkey from a relatively safe distance. The newer Su-34 has access to the same classes of missile, as well as the newer and more advanced KH-38, KH-65 and KH-101. KH-38 self-guided missiles can deploy cluster munitions, fragmentation warheads and armor-piercing warheads. The very long-ranged KH-101 benefits from advanced stealth capabilities and high precision. The Su-30 flanker is also highly capable in a strike role and can deploy the KH-31 anti-radiation missile and the KH-59. While these assets alone are likely to be sufficient to disable all Turkey's air bases, given the missile sophistication and Turkey's lack of air defenses, Russia can also call on massive fire support from its own territory. Bombers and Su-34s can strike targets across Turkey with KH-101 missiles without leaving Russian airspace. Even a small fraction of the fleet could put Turkey's major air bases and command centers out of action very quickly. More dangerous still is the KH-47M2 Kinjal hypersonic ballistic missile, which can also reach Turkey from extreme ranges and is deployed by Tu-22M and MiG-31K jets. The missile strikes at Mach 10 speeds and can put most bases out of action with a single hit. It will be assumed that Russia will not deploy nuclear-armed missiles, which could neutralize Turkish air bases even more effectively. Turkey's extremely poor air defenses will be a very effective force multiplier for Russian attacks. Looking at Turkey's own strike capabilities, these are also extremely modest. The AGM-88A Harm dates back to the early 1980s and lacks modern electronic warfare countermeasures. This combined with a slow speed, low maneuverability and a lack of stealth guarantees a very high interception rate for Russian air defenses. With a very short range, F-16s are highly unlikely to be able to get within range of Russian targets without themselves being neutralized. Turkey also deploys the newer AGM-84K. With a 250km range, this missile can be launched without moving too close to Russian air defenses, although interception by Russian fighters is still likely. Only around 50 of these missiles are in service, and their low speed and maneuverability and lack of stealth means Russia's air defense network will likely make short work of them. Thus, it can be concluded that Turkey's only advantage in an air war is a larger number of fighters. Recent pilot shortages and the massive qualitative advantage favoring Russia will undermine this. Russia has the advantage of combat jets which are both heavier and more sophisticated, air defenses which are overwhelmingly more capable, and superior air-to-air -air missiles. Its cruise missile arsenal is both more diverse and far more sophisticated, and its fighters can carry many more of these missiles over longer distances. With Russia able to strike air bases across Turkey with impunity, and Turkey struggling to strike Russia's own facilities in Syria, the result of an air war is likely to be an overwhelming Russian victory.